This is Regan Wellness Podcast, episode 175, How the Walkman Changed the Fitness Industry. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Jamie Logie. I run RegainWellness.com and this is Regan Wellness Podcast. So thanks for coming on out. And this is a bit of a different show just because looking back on sort of a combination of pop culture and those, you know, specific moments and incidents that kind of changed the trajectory of things. And in this case, related to fitness. So we'll get right into it. But before that, here's the obligatory subscribe to the podcast, wherever you find your podcast. There's a lot of options now, but I should be, I think, in all of them. So yeah, do that. Okay, let's get to it. So I'm betting you are listening to this on your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. Um, You might not be, you might be listening like on the website or on your laptop, but you know, going by the demographics, it's a good chance you're on your phone and you may be, I don't know what you're doing right now. You might be having breakfast or driving your car or at the gym or walking. And the whole point is this is just talking about how our phones and music specifically are, have become synonymous with working out. And you probably, if you are being fit and active, you probably cannot picture doing any form of exercise without music. And like, I can think of times where I've got to the gym and I realized I forgot my headphones and I've either left or I've, um, gone back and got them and, or drove home or whatever it is, just because it's been that kind of ingrained with, um, everything to do with exercise. So like these days, personally, I, if I am listening to anything, it's kind of combination, sometimes music, honestly, it's a lot it, I listen to podcasts most of the time when I exercise. Even now, I'm not, I'm not even listening to anything. I sometimes just have headphones in just to not be <clears throat> disturbed or whatever. And sometimes it helps me focus. But I, I figure it's a kind of a killing two birds with one stone situation. It's a good time to learn something. Or, I mean, with the, the amount of streaming services we have available, like I use Apple Music <clears throat> or if you use Spotify, there's so much. There's so much music. It's It's so hard to like stay on top of or, or albums you put into like your list that you can't get to. And the gym is a perfect time, or it's just any form of music that motivates you. So that's, you know, the iPod, the video iPod, the iPhone, again, are synonymous with working out and change it. But this is looking back on the Walkman. And this is something I never really um, occurred to me and never really realized the connection that the Walkman had with the fitness industry. And so just sort of researching a bit. So, you know, combine some pop culture. If you grew up in the 80s, then hopefully you'll appreciate this. But a lot of it has to do with two two moments that kind of changed the trajectory of how fitness became more mainstream and more consumed by the masses and became more accessible. Fitness is always like gyms and strength training have always been sort of an underground thing. Uh, if you think coming through like, you know, in the fifties and sixties, it was a very, like a very fringe, like niche sort of a uh, pursuit. Um, and, and kind of weird to a lot of people, same thing in the seventies and sort of like the, the bodybuilding era getting bigger. And then people like obviously Arnold, Schwar- Arnold Schwarzenegger growing it. If you've ever seen the movie pumping iron, it's very good. You don't even have to like fitness. It's an awesome documentary. And like, you know, but it's still like kind of a cult thing until, Rocky came out in 1976 and that was seen as the moment that changed the course of fitness forever because now what was, you know, more of a underground, um, exclude, well, not exclusive, but like limited thing to, you know, boxers or weightlifters or whatever has now been presented in this like blockbuster monumental film. And it motivated so many people, you know, through his training montages and, his workouts and his old school approaches. And that kicked off a massive fitness boom that started to propel going into the eighties. And then that's when you see the huge um, increase in <clears throat> things like aerobics classes and aerobic studios and jazzercise and sweat into the oldies and 
um, the opening of gyms and fitness clubs and it just exploded. And it's basically because of Rocky getting people motivated and encouraged them to be fit and seeing that it's something that can be done by anyone. You know, it's a motivational story and, and just very cool how that propelled everything moving forward. And then, so the other one is what we're going to talk about now, the Walkman. So I'll give you a quick little history and kind of development of what went behind the Walkman and what got it to where it was. So up until the invention of the Walkman, I mean, if you wanted to take your music anywhere, you had to lug around a gigantic ghetto blaster that was probably hooked up to a car battery. And the thing though, the Walkman isn't, you know, it's not the first portable listening device, obviously not the last, but it's really what allowed people to take their music with them and have it be incorporated into their daily lives. And especially like the, the yellow design of the Walkman became, you know, synonymous with activity and portable music and like movement and and the same way that the iPod and, you know, the white earbuds would become sort of like an iconic image. And so the thing is we, we already had the technology before the Walkman, but it took the foresight to create a better packaging and an ease of use. Same thing with Steve jobs and the the iPod, like MP3 players already existed, but some of them were awful and it just took that, can it just basically a simplification of it to make it more accessible by everyone? So, the, like I said, the concept of a Walkman, which is a magnetic tape player, been around since about 1963 in the Netherlands, where Philips had first created it. And its original intention was to be used for quick playback for secretaries, journalists, people like that. Uh, like I said, there's other portable electronics like transistor radios, but you're limited to what was being played on the radio but at least you had the option to take music on the go. So Sony's at the forefront of all this and they've always been a part of this technology and they were actually one of the first that introduced the transistor radio back in 1955 when a young Marty McFly would struggle not to break his parents up. So cassette tapes were introduced in the 60s and even though they were embraced, people still preferred listening to vinyl And the appeal of cassettes, however, was that they were small and compact and they'd lend themselves better to car stereos than obviously vinyl would or even like 8-track players, RIP 8-track. So like many inventions, the Walkman is a solution to a problem. And it comes from the co-founder of Sony named Masaru Ibuka. Or yeah, I hope that's right. I doubt he's listening. Um So he would use a Sony product called the TCD5 cassette recorder to be able to listen to music while he was traveling. But it was this like bulky piece of electronic. It wasn't the most conducive thing for carrying around. So he asked one of his uh, executives, an executive deputy president, to design a smaller device that was only meant for playback. And he also wanted to have stereo sound so he could better enjoy his music. And he wanted to be able to listen to it on headphones. He liked classical music and he wanted to hear it like the actual symphony as it was sounding. So he wanted proper stereo. So the first prototype is built from a modified old mono cassette recorder, which was called the Sony Pressman. And obviously that name is going to come back in a bit. So this early iteration of the Walkman was finally put together and it was made of a silver and blue metal case. If you remember how that looked, those original ones. It was called the TPS L2, and it would be considered the world's first low-cost portable stereo. And it was originally released in Japan on July 1st, 1979, and it sold for around 40,000 yen. At the time, this is the equivalent of around 150 US dollars. And if you adjust that for inflation today, it's around the equivalent of about 500 bucks, which seems like crazy expensive and I had no idea they went for that price. But if you think like the first versions of anything go for a lot, like the first versions of the the VCRs were like five grand if you convert them for today. And if you think the the first iPods were sold for $399 and if you adjust that for inflation to this year, it's around the equivalent of $518. So it's kind of right on line with all those other things. So now they have to give the Walkman its name. And the Pressman name had hung around for a bit and, and Sony had played around 
with a few different ideas on what to call this little portable stereo. So in Japan, where it was called the TPSL2, which doesn't really roll off the tongue, it was thought that for launch in America in June 1980, it needed a more descriptive name. The first idea was to call it, it was, it was going to be called the Soundabout. And that's actually how it was first introduced. And the next possible name that they're thinking to tra- transition into is going to be called the Stowaway. I don't know what the hell that <laughs> would mean. And they were going to use that actually in the UK but it, you know, it presents a problem. It's hard to market and advertise something that has various names in different countries. And Sony's having an actual tough time trying to find a universal name that hadn't been trademarked to hell all over the place. So coming up with uncopyrighted names took them a ton of time and a ton of money, and it delayed releasing the Walkman. So nothing's coming together, and they went back to that original Pressman device and they obviously swapped out the press for walk as a way to describe what the main use would be for this new device actually i don't think the soundabout is the worst name i've ever heard now i'm looking back on all this so now this is where they're starting to market everything hopefully you find this interesting it's just amazing to look back on these like kind of iconic devices that have been part of our lives and see what brought them to the forefront and and at the time, again, this is weird because the in the early '80s there wasn't the embracement of Japanese culture. It not it's just not as commonplace as it is today. You know, there's obviously big things that have come over the years, like the technology or Hello Kitty or Pokemon or the massive popularity of sushi in Japanese restaurants that exploded through the '80s. Everything like that. So it's there's still a relatively new. Thing in North America, and the Walkman was seen as one of the first ways to bring some Japaneseness into not only North American but global culture. So we know the best electronics have come from Japan, but it's you know it wasn't common knowledge in the early '80s. So Sony really wanted to promote the idea of high technology, but also the concept of miniaturization. And the Walkman was that idea of taking your giant home stereo and shrinking it down into something that could fit right in your hand. You know, it could arguably fit in your pocket. Most of them were a little big, but they were also aware of the potential isolation that the name provided. The product was connected with a man, but the early advertisements made sure to show walk men and walk women. So it wasn't restricting anybody. A big focus on the advertising was based around now the personalization of this new device and how you can incorporate it into your life. And like I said, up to that point, the transistor radio was the only way to listen to music. And if you were limited to whatever radio stations you could tune into, um, you were stuck with it or whatever playlist happened to be on. Like if you like jazz and you only had access to like rock stations, you're pretty screwed. So Sony focused on this idea that this was a music revolution the same way Steve Jobs would do this. And now you could take your own custom music anywhere you went. So from mixtapes to multiple cassettes, you had a ton of options with you at all times. So the other big thing is you could listen privately. And, you know, obviously a huge selling point to young punk teens and their crazy rock music. But, you know, there's no fear of being mocked for wanting to listen to Wham! wherever you are because no one knew you were listening to it. Not not that I was. So at the time, this is kind of revolutionary advertising. They're, they were promoting this high technology which seemed amazing to everyone, but at the same time making it seem like it was made for you as an individual. So it's cool. So it's like, not only is this product awesome, but you can listen to all the Depeche mode you want, which you probably listened to in the eighties. And it just, it goes back to that idea, you know, I talk about, you're probably on your phone right now listening to this. And it, it's like with technology, it's not, or like you're, if you think how that it's technology has advanced everything in fitness with like, our phones and um, step counters and Fitbits and the music and the podcast we can listen to and uh, like any, or your iPad, anything. It's not the device we like per se. It's the content that you have. So like, I don't necessarily love my iPhone as a thing, but I love all the music I have on it. I love that I can track all my, like my workouts and I love the podcasts I have on it. I love that I can, connect with friends anytime I want. I like the pictures on it of 
everything I love and family and the things that connect you with everything. It's just, you know, the device is just the vehicle to deliver the content you love. And that's what Sony really hits upon with the Walkman. It's mass marketing and it's personal differentiation at the same time. So here's the initial response to the Walkman. And not forgetting that it first debuted in Japan, it's a hit right out of the gate. I don't know how old you are <laughs> listening, but you probably remember this. If you're under 25, you probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So ask your parents what a Walkman was. But I, I imagine you're somewhat familiar. So when they uh, Sony originally predicts they're going to sell around 5,000 units a month, that was their goal. They sell 50,000 in the first two months. So it's a hit in Japan. In America, the Walkman actually had a disappointing first few months of sales. Then they kick in all the advertising uh, in like full steam and then they're off to the races. And then this has a massive impact on the sale of cassette tapes. So by again, if you're young and you might have to Google what a cassette tape is. By 1983, cassettes started to outsell vinyl for the first time ever. And this now leads to a huge influx of competition by other companies trying to get in on the Walkman craze, like companies like Toshiba and Panasonic. I had a crappy knockoff one that I cannot even remember the brand name of that I got at Zeller's, which is a Canadian kind of previous version of Walmart, but worse, if you can picture that. And it was, I can't remember what the thing was called, but it was yellow. And the yellow Walkman were kind of, this is what kind of propelled um, the fitness movement. And they would unyell, unyell, unveil, uh, Sony would do this, the iconic yellow Walkman. And they started it out with some focus groups and they were playing around with this new sports Walkman because they thought there is, um, now that people are on the go and people are carrying these everywhere, they, they're, they're walking and they're, they're starting to be a little more active. Could they make something like if you look at the old, the first Walkman, like that blue and silver, it looks a little mechanical and robotic and they wanted something that would catch people's eye a little more. So if you are, um, you know, out for a walk or on a hike, you're not going to miss the yellow. You're like people remember (laughs) you'd have them clipped to your belt and you would not miss that or the yellow headphones. So they wanted this sports Walkman um, and they, they started focus groups and they asked the men and women in the focus groups what they thought of this. And the initial response is pretty positive as the new, this new Walkman seems sporty, um, better. It, it was better than the boring black one. There was black ones as well, if you remember, that are they're now everywhere, but they just don't stand out. The same way um, people with normal like headphones didn't really stand out until they started wearing the iPod earbuds and then you couldn't help but notice those people everywhere you went. So they have the focus group and then when they're done on the way out, they let the people who participate to take a complimentary Walkman. So they had tables out with, um, you know, a bunch of the original black ones and they put all the new yellow sportsmen or sports Walkmans on the table. Everyone takes the black one. And then, so they're wondering why people would do this. And it just it came <laughs> this idea that people just want to be nice to someone who's being enthusiastic about enthusiastic about something such as how the moderator is being with the new yellow Walkman. And since people were getting on board with the yellow Walkman in the focus group, it's hard, it's harder to be, you know, to speak up against a group. So now they're not sure, but they want, Sony wants to stay with the original yellow color just because it, 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 um, presents more again, that movement idea, that activity, but in theory, they could have put out a bright purple one and maybe got the same feedback due to the issues that came out with the market research. But it's what they were looking at was that yellow encouraged activity. And what helped, again, propel the yellow sports Walkman was, again, great advertising campaigns and its ability to stand out as the must-have accessory. Again, back to the iPod and your your phone, your iPhone or your Android phone, your Samsung Galaxy, whatever it is. Once you see something in advertising, and then you start seeing it out in the streets, it really creates a big desire. Say even like with Fitbits, when you see people in the gyms with their trackable wearable technology, it's a bit of a desire. Like I I have various thoughts on Fitbits and if they're helpful and, and, and they might be and 
whatever. And I sometimes find myself wanting one and I have no interest. I don't wear watches or anything, but it's just when you see it all the time, if marketing is done right, then they're selling this feeling of emotion and a desire. And a lot of times that's what you're buying. So with Walkmans and fitness, you're seeing people being active and you're wanting that for yourself. Like you're wanting to be exercising and you're wanting to be feeling better and you're seeing that in other people. And the Walkman is like maybe the way to get to that. Uh, There's also a bit of a sense of keeping up with the Joneses as you always want what the other guys got. And electronics companies have always, these are more side rants here. They've always had smart ways to create buzz by getting products actually out there in the public. Like companies like Kindle would do this with their e-readers. They would put people on like, you know, in public uh, areas or high traffic areas or public transportation or subways in big cities like New York, London, Paris, whatever. And they would plant people on the subway cars reading like on their e-reader to show it in action. And, you know, if you put enough, if you think about the amount of people that are commuting and seeing these things, they're going to notice it. I, like, I remember very well when you, you're seeing people with these first e-readers, like, what the hell is this? And like, you want to, you know, you're seeing it in action now. And they would have people in, in again, very high traffic areas with new technology. Apple did this again well too. Like, They'd have people with the earbuds and the iPod walking around through Times Square or Piccadilly Circus, like places where you can't help but notice it in, you know, a real life situation. So, you you know, you see <clears throat> someone out for a jog with that yellow Walkman in their hands and those yellow headphones in their ears and that desire is created. It's kind of like that shiny pebble aspect. So looking more at the influence um, and how it's pertaining to fitness you know, like everyone had some form of Walkman at one point or the other. It was now it's the perfect combination of portability and privacy. You know, it ran off just two AA batteries. It could run for quite a while, depending on as long as you weren't doing a ton of rewinding. Remember how much that would kill your battery and you try to avoid it, especially, you know, when it was fading. And then you'd try to finish a song on one side so that you would flip it over, but it'd be at the right starting point on the other side. Again, kids, you don't understand the struggles we went through with this stuff. In 1986, the word Walkman enters the Oxford English Dictionary. And side note, I had no idea, but Walkmans were still being manufactured up till 2010. Who the hell was buying a Walkman in 2010? They finally discontinued it on October 23rd, 2010, but the people still wanted. Um, And again, you know, looking into the specifics of fitness, like I've worked in fitness my whole life and I've spent quite a bit of time in the gym. And and now, like I said, at the start of the show, can you even, if you're working out, you cannot even picture yourself working out without music. It's just, it's at the backbone of all your workouts. It's what drives you to push through cardio or to push through extra sets or extra repetitions. So the fitness boom is just starting in to the 80s. But when the Walkman first hit, that's when the actual movement started happening. And millions of people started using the Walkman to exercise, you know, from running to training in the gym. You could now listen to what you wanted instead of whatever crap was blaring over the gym speakers. And they actually pinpoint the Walkman as creating the, the actual aerobics crazed that turned more people on to getting fit because now they, again, it's like customization, personalization. From 1987 to 1997, which is the height of the popularity of the Walkman, the number of people who said they started walking for exercise increased by 30% because they can now take their music with them. And again, like this, all, like this all leads the way to the MP3 player, ultimately the iPod. And then the fitness movement grew even more from there. Like as far as more gyms being opened up, more people being active, more people running, more people having, like now you have, you know, with the Walkman, you can only take a cassette or two with you. But, you know, obviously with the iPod, you can have every song ever made or ever recorded um, and make multiple playlists and stuff like that. And then that, but it all starts with the Walkman and the boom in the fitness craze and encouraging and motivating more people to get fit. So 
a bit, <laughs> hopefully you like this. It's, you know, kind of half of a trip down memory lane, but also, you know, seeing the things that happened in the past that are getting us to where we are today. And, you know, the Walkman cements itself in part of eighties pop culture, you know, it again, like led to the Disman, the MP3 player to now the phone that you're listening to. So hopefully if you like this show, let me know. You can always email me at info at regainwellness.com. Or if you want to see other topics like this covered, let me know. Or if you hate it, let me know too. Either way is good. So I'll finish up here. Thanks for listening. Again, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. If you really like it, leave it a rating and review. If you're working out right now or exercising, have a good rest of the workout. Everyone else, you know, stay fit, stay healthy, and remember to stretch your hamstrings. You know who you are.